one of life's biggest regrets is dunking that stuff in. Okay, today I'm gonna make, this is the big one here. It's the creme de la creme of Julia Child's desserts. Charlotte Molikov. This is Jamie and Julia. Oh! <laughs> bon appetit. So I was just watching Julia make this on her show and yeah, she's making it and she takes a taste test and she goes, oh, this is just awfully good. I really think this is just the, the best dessert I know. <laughs> Sorry. Also, my expectations are through the roof. We're gonna find this recipe in Mastering the Art of French Cooking from our gal, JC. And yeah, it's a classic recipe. I've heard about this one for ages. And I have a choice. It's between the Charlotte Malakov with almond cream and fresh strawberries or with almond cream and chocolate. And I've been making a lot of desserts with fruit in them lately. So, you know, I think chocolate's kind of getting left behind. So also the chocolate one is the best dessert Julia knows. Remember? So yeah, easy choice. Now the dessert is molded in ladyfingers. And ladyfingers, if you're not familiar with that, it's like, uh, well, we'll get to it soon enough, don't worry. This delectable almond cream is relatively quick to assemble if you have ladyfingers on hand, which we don't. But they must be of excellent quality. Okay, and she's saying that we can either go the store-bought route or make them ourselves. Well, I think Julia would want me to make them myself. Also, store-bought may be cheating, at least today, I think. So yeah, that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna make them, and we're gonna do that right now. So as long as everything has been mise en place, all we have to do is just dive right in. Let's do it. Bowl me. Oh, thank you. So we're gonna use the, we're gonna use the big bowl to, check out the pretty patterns. Forget plastic wrap, we're all about the bees wrap over here. Three egg yolks into my bowl. Gradually beat in half a cup, 100 grams of granulated sugar, in with the egg yolks while the mixer's running. Once the sugar's combined, a teaspoon of vanilla. I continue beating this for several minutes until it's thick, pale yellow, it forms the ribbon. And I was watching Julie on her show do this, and she says uh, it needs to be pretty damn thick. So yeah, we gotta make it thick. Once I lift it up, you can see it kind of hanging out on the top for a bit. I think that's a fairly strong ribbon situation. All right, put that aside. Let me go fetch an old friend. This silver fox. I came across this little thing the other day, which was just like a little splash of vinegar and just like a little bit of salt. Kind of like move that all around the bowl and then I go wash it out. That's gonna make this bowl super clean. Okay, that way I can ensure that these are gonna be the stiffest peaks I've ever peaked. I hope everyone's okay. Not yet. The egg whites from three eggs. Get this little thingamajig on, get a little pinch of salt in there, and let's whip this up until we've reached. So once I've got soft peaks, I'm gonna add in a tablespoon of sugar, gradually, gradually, and a hoot of cream of tartar, one eighth teaspoon. No, actually, quarter teaspoon. Talk to me. Okay, we're looking at some stiff ass peaks. Thank you very much, Silver. Um, so let's bring over that beautiful ribbon over here. Add in a little of the egg whites to start. Get it all combined. Remember that the party can't start until there's just, you know, a little bit of a friendship formed. And then we can add the rest. Start on the side, all the way down, flip it over, rotate the bowl, and repeat. And, uh, oh, sh sh sticks. Right, I forgot about that. The cart kind of got ahead of the horse there. Let me take out the last bit of egg whites that hasn't been folded in yet. Uh, what I gotta do is add in half a cup, 62 and a half grams of sifted all-purpose flour, a little at a time. I'm gonna sift in one fourth of my flour. Delicately fold until partially blended. More egg whites. All right, just keep alternating until it's all combined. The flour has to be added now rather than at the beginning because Julia says that this batter is just too damn thick. 
uh, to uh, fold in egg whites if the flour is already in there. It's gonna deflate the egg whites. Okay, I got a piping bag over here. Take a look at my piping bag nozzle collection. Haven't been in here in a minute. What's a good one? Okay, so let's get that in there. Bit of deja vu here. I think I've made lady fingers before because uh, this next step is something that is ingrained in my memory. Yeah, I made lady fingers for the tiramisu. For tiramisu, years ago. You buy them at the supermarket in the cookie section. It's already packaged up and you just take them out and you put them in your dessert. That's cheating. I'm sorry, but that is cheating. Now, Julie always wants me to just like butter up a baking sheet, add some flour on top, and then the mix goes directly on top of that. I am going the parchment paper route today. So much easier. Snip the tip. Okay, it's go time. So this needs to be one and a half inches wide, four inches long. I need kind of a benchmark. Terrible, terrible effort. Just terrible. Okay, not bad. And then spaced one inch apart, do another one. How many am I supposed to make? 24? Jeez. These things might spread in the oven, so just keep that in mind as well. Stiffer sponge cake than we're usually uh, working with over here. Uh, we are bone dry. 22 lady fingers, and a couple of these really need some TLC. Okay, just grab that, put it over there. Bake in middle and upper third levels of the preheated oven. Okay, 20 minutes. I just wanna shut up for a second, get them in there. So I've got the timer on for 20 minutes, but it's most likely gonna be finished well before that. Uh, shh. Okay, so, I uh, just Okay, so I forgot a crucial ingredient. What the hell was that? I have all of this. Okay, so I have all this icing sugar that I was supposed to sprinkle on top of the cake batter before I put it in the oven. Completely forgot. <laughs> it's not that funny. Just a very thin layer of powdered sugar on top. Got it. Okay, okay, we can do this, we can do this. Okay. I don't know how you forget things like this. I really don't. I've only been in for a few minutes. Hopefully that's okay. Slightly crusty on the outside, slightly. So tender and dry on the inside. Dry on the inside. Okay, so although the ones on this tray are finished, these ones are taking a little longer because I think they're thicker and just generally like, there's more on this tray. So I think they're finished. Well, that went smoothly. Okay, so I mean, obviously this icing sugar thing didn't really work out because when I lift these things up, the icing sugar just falls right off. So that being said, I don't think it's very important to the finished dessert if the icing sugar sticks on these things or not. All I really need are these little things right here. So uh, that's what I got, that's what I need. I mean, there's just too much going on in the world to worry about some damn icing sugar on some lady fingers. let me tell you that. Anyway. Clean up your damn mess. So in some sort of any dish, any dish will do. Actually, you know what? It's pretty distracting, isn't it? Goddamn icing sugar. And it's filthy on the other side too. All right. So this is what? Half a cup, 150 mils of water into some sort of dish. Cointreau. This is an orange liqueur. I'm gonna need What am I gonna need? So I'm gonna need one third cup now and a quarter cup down the road. 
Okay, that's one third. Do I have enough? That's all the... Okay, that's one third cup, quarter cup down the road. Give that a mix. Uh, what I gotta do is dunk these uh, one by one into my little concoction over here. Uh, just roll them around super quickly and then back onto the rack. We gotta move fast because, well, I don't need to tell you what happens to lady fingers when they're in liquid for extended periods of time. First one goes in, roll it around, out. Yeah, we got a system now. The icing sugar literally just comes off as soon as you add them into this. These lady fingers did not like that. Not one bit. Uh, they are completely falling apart in front of my very eyes. So I think we have to just move on to the next step immediately. And uh, I have no real time to introduce you to my Charlotte mold. Although I did a pretty good job doing that in the Apple Charlotte video. So if you haven't seen that one, well you should check that out. Seven inches in diameter four inches deep, and it kind of slants inward a bit. You know, it's not just straight up and down. It's just kind of on the slant. Anyway, I'd love to stop talking about this thing. So cut the lady fingers into a design of wedges to fit the bottom of this mold first. So soggy, so soggy. Okay, just keep doing it, man. Evidently, these lady fingers did not did not enjoy their time in the drink. I think I just ruined this dessert. One of life's biggest regrets is dunking that stuff and they've all completely fallen apart. So yeah, this isn't exactly what I had in mind at all. Actually, this is... There is a warning in this book that we should listen to. Well, it's too late now, but I mean, now we know what happened. I didn't think this applied to me initially, but it does. Do not attempt any dessert calling for a mold lined with lady fingers unless you have lady fingers of the best quality. I was hoping I did, but I don't think, I don't think that was the case. Dry and light, not spongy and limp. It's too late now. Just, you know, slop up some of that mushy lady finger that's in your Charlotte pan. The, you know, the lady finger that's just completely soaked in booze. Take a shot. Feels good. <laughs> Stiff peaks. You know, just after a quick thought, I decided to kind of double down on my efforts. Uh, I'm doubling this ladyfinger recipe because I just don't think... I need enough to cover my ass just in case things go south, which they inevitably... So instead of 24 ladyfingers, I am now... I'm, you know, we're getting closer to 50. So yeah, I think that's great. I think it's gonna be great. Once you snip the tip, it's go time. I know what I need to accomplish. I want them to be overall just better. Sprinkling on powdered sugar, 1 16th of an inch of a layer on top. This is apparently going to encourage some rising out of these guys too. Hopefully, whatever the hell 1 16th of an inch of a layer is, but that looks about right. Be more careful with this one. This is the really nice ones. Now we wait and hope and wish and dream, dream big. And my goal is to get them all onto this cooling rack. <laughs> all right, so the rest of these lady fingers are stuck on the parchment paper. Of course, of course, of course. Come on, 
push down as firmly as you can. Scrape it off. You know what it is. Maybe these aren't cooked all the way through. These are not inspiring any confidence for me whatsoever. In fact, how did it go so south? I feel like I was just standing here having a temper tantrum about the first batch and <laughs> uh, these ones are just not as good. Well, I'm gonna do exactly what I did last time, except, uh, you know, it's just like, it's just a quick dip. I'm actually just gonna, I'm not even gonna let them go. I'm just gonna, honestly, all I'm gonna do is just, yeah, one, two, take it out. Okay, one, two, take it out. All right, so bring the Charlotte mold over here. No time for introductions. I didn't catch this the first time, but I'm supposed to line the bottom of this mold with um, wax paper. She always wants me to use wax paper, but uh, it gets like wet and like too damp and it falls apart. It's not as strong as parchment paper. There is a method in cutting perfect circles out of parchment paper. I know that, but I'm just not in the mood to look it up right now. So one handle here. Okay, the base needs to be lined first. I've lined the bottom, now I'm lining the sides of this mold. <sighs> this is just not enjoyable. You know, old Jamie would just carry forward with what I got because, well, I did what she said. <laughs> However, while this thing just topples down in front of me, I have to make a choice. And technically speaking, I did what Julia asked for. I made homemade lady fingers and then I lined my mold with them. The proof is in the pudding, somewhat. These homemade lady fingers right here are not good. They suck. They, they really suck. If I take a bite out of it, it's awful. It's something funny with the taste of them, honestly. They're very chewy and gummy and they very much remind me of the very first time I made macarons. This is a way back playback, like five years ago I made these awful macaron cookies that were chewy and gummy and that got stuck in your teeth it was not enjoyable in the least. And I couldn't get those off parchment paper either. Proving to be the most difficult thing in the world. How am I gonna get these off? They won't come off the parchment paper. It's so frustrating. And now here we are today and I got the same problem. So what did I learn in five years? Nothing. It's really not that big of a problem. All I have to do is go to the store and pick up lady fingers. So, I bought them. Had to be done. And it feels like a weight has been lifted off my shoulders. Now I just can like comfortably proceed with the next step. It feels great. So obviously these lady fingers are much thicker than the ones that I had. So they are gonna be able to withstand some booze. Out with the old, in with the new. So Cointreau water mix into some sort of dish and let's get dunking. Just a quick dunk. So just make it all fit. It's my choice to have the sugar that was already sprinkled on these store-bought ladyfingers to be facing inward because I don't want to make it seem like they're store-bought, even though they clearly look so very much store-bought. Now these fingers need to be in line with the edge of the mold. So I'm just going to cut the tips, cut the tips. I'm going to get this into the fridge so I can do the rest of this damn dessert. <laughs> yeah. So it goes without saying that, you know, attempting ladyfingers twice, ultimately failing, going to the store to pick up store-bought instead, uh, that whole fiasco has, has really slowed me down. So that day is just flying by. And uh, yeah, this next part needs to be put together a little more uh, quicker. Efficient is another good word. Um, so I really just wanna get this done, this almond cream. That's what we're moving on to. Almond cream with chocolate. Problem is that I just took the butter out of the so the thing about kitchen hacks is, well, people have to experiment with different methods until they figure out that it's actually a hack. So that's what I'm about to do, is experiment with a method to make this butter room temperature.
Nice. Bowl me. Thank you. Half a pound, 226 grams of room temp butter. Wink, wink. So this right here, one cup, 198 grams worth of like a very fine sugar, like super fine. Gotta cream this together for three to four minutes. Until that is pale and fluffy. That is for sure both of those things. Quarter teaspoon of almond extract. Cointreau, a quarter cup worth. It's until the sugar has completely dissolved. <laughs> it's butter and sugar. That's basically it. Well, that is it. In Julia's show, it all makes sense what she was saying. She said, this is the dessert for people who don't need to lose any weight. She said you have to pay in calories if you want to eat such an elegant dessert. One and one third cup of almond flour. Just lightly beat it in, you bastard. Okay, you can stop. Actually, a bit longer. All right, with four ounces of semi-sweet chocolate, I need a quarter cup of strong coffee. I planned that. Do not seize, do not seize, do not seize. Clean beaters, gonna need a bowl. Thank you. And these go in the freezer for just a few minutes. I'm gonna add the chocolate into this mix here. Realize that you just put the beater things in the freezer. You need those first before you do whatever you were gonna do. Ay, ay, ay. This is two cups worth of heavy cream. The ribbon stage. Until you lift this up and it leaves light traces. Yeah, fold the cream into the almond butter mixture. It's molding time. Turn a third of this almond cream into the lined mold. Cover with a layer of lady fingers that you know, I have left over. Lady fingers go on top, just a couple. I also have some of the pieces that I cut off earlier. I'm just gonna throw a couple of those in there too, fill in some of the gaps. Uh, but I saw Julia do this on the show and she just kind of threw it all in. So <laughs> there's no real rhyme or reason to what the hell I'm doing. Well, there is, because I'm following the cookbook. A repeat with the almond cream and then some more lady fingers. Fill to the top. I feel like you have to make kind of like a base for this thing, right? And the last of the lady fingers. If I say lady finger one more time, so help me. I'm gonna use some wax paper for this next step. So once you got the wax paper on top, some sort of weight goes on. I'm gonna use my cast iron skillet. It's nice and heavy. And I don't need to lean on it like that because it's heavy enough. Chill it for six hours or overnight. That's an easy call. The day I've had. Good night. Just kidding, I have to clean up everything. It is time to unmold this thing. Take the wax paper off. Knife around the edge. Don't wanna do any damage, Jamie. Okay, so alley-oop. Yeah, how is this gonna come out? Okay, cool. You better come out this time. Alley-oop! Yep, yep, yep. Okay, that looks pretty good, pretty good. Just gonna do a little chocolate shavings on top. Just like, that should do it. Order up! Just like you're serving a pie, she says. Woo! Yeah. Yeah. Better to be safe than sorry, you know? 
Who's ready? I gotta be honest with you. That's sensational. Best decision I ever made was uh, going to the store bought Lady Fingers. If I had gone with mine, that would have been the biggest mistake of my YouTube career. The Lady Fingers here are just incredible. Proper thickness, they're completely soaked in that orange liqueur. You're picking that up, but also you're just eating like this delicious, soft, mushy cake that's surrounding this beautiful filling. The filling of this thing is kind of a combination of the Kilimanjaro chocolate almond ice cream that I made, but also the chocolate mousse. It's kind of like both of those combined in here. When I had the crepe Suzette for the very first time, it's the fifth episode of this series, and it blew my mind. And it was probably one of the most unhealthiest desserts I've ever had, but it was also one of the best. And now I'm looking at this thing and I'm thinking, well, yeah, there's a new kid in town. The thing that makes this so great is that you're only allowed one slice. Any more than that is just too much. You know it's too much, Jamie. So you just have to enjoy the one slice that you had. Close your eyes, just enjoy it, and you have to move on. But you're never gonna forget it. You know? I'm never gonna forget you. <sighs> it's a good day. This was Jamie and Julia. Bon appetit. Au revoir. It's like the war of the worlds outside. As Julia said, this, this really is one of the best desserts I know. <laughs> and you know, the lady speaks the truth.